treaty-based investment arbitration. An example. This video illustrates how bilateral investment treaties help foreign investors to protect their undertakings against expropriatory actions of the host state. By taking a real-life example, the video will briefly discuss the 2017 expropriation of General Motors' assembly plant in Venezuela. Subsequently, it will show how GM may avail itself of international rights to counter the unlawful expropriation by filing an investment arbitration based on a bilateral investment treaty. In the international investment arbitration, GM may ask for the restitution of the plant and or the payment of a compensation of over $100 million. The video will conclude making reference to the applicable arbitration rules, forum, and worldwide enforcement of the ensuing arbitral award. The background of the dispute, an illegal expropriation to the sound of the gavel. In April 2017, a Venezuelan court ordered the seizure of GM's entire plant in Valencia, a plant estimated to be worth over $100 million, to compensate two car dealerships for the termination of their dealership agreements. Back in the year 2000, on July 12th, GM Venezuela sent a notice to two car dealerships to terminate their agreements. These dealership agreements were entered into on July 19, 1999, and were due to expire on January 15, 2000. But GM Venezuela extended their duration up to August 15, 2000. The agreements provided for grounds of termination in case of default of the party's obligations. Since the car dealerships defaulted on their obligations, GM Venezuela sent them a notice of termination effective as of August 15, 2000. Upon receiving the notice, the two car dealerships filed with Venezuelan courts a claim for constitutional protection to rescind the efforts of the notice of termination of their agreements. On October 25, 2000, the court declared null and void the two notices of termination, thus reinstating the original dealership agreements, which anyway were due to expire on August 15, 2000. As such, since the court decision limited itself to declaring the invalidity of the two notices of termination on July 12, 2000, without amending or further extending the duration of the dealership agreements, such agreements were terminated by their original expiration date, which was August 15, 2000. After this court case had remained dormant for seven years, the two car dealerships purported to execute the court's ruling by requesting the delivery of over 9,000 vehicles from GM Venezuela to be paid at cost price and only upon purchase of any given vehicle by the final customer. Despite that the 2000 court's ruling had merely declaratory effects, in other words, it had neither compensatory effects nor constitutive effects providing for new obligations for the parties to the dealership agreements, on August 7, 2007, the Enforcement Court issued an order giving effects to the car dealership's request without even notifying GM Venezuela of the process, thereby depriving GM of the right to defend itself. The 2007 Enforcement Order went beyond the res judicata boundaries of the 2000 Court's ruling. Indeed, there is no identity between what is intended to be executed, an order to hand over vehicles, and the operative part of the 2000 Court's ruling a declaration of invalidity of the notices of termination. As such, this constituted a grotesque violation of due process. Accordingly, GM opposed the enforcement order of 2007, which anyway ended up impounding 158 vehicles. On June 13, 2016, another enforcement order was issued against GM Venezuela renewing the injunction to hand over more than 9,000 vehicles. Since GM could not materially comply with the delivery of these vehicles, on April 4, 2017, the court ordered the forced seizure of any of GM's assets to collect a monetary sum equal to the value of 9,000 vehicles. This monetary sum was set to be at approximately $100 million by the court based on an anonymous estimation without hearing any experts. On April 18, 2017, Venezuelan authorities took over by public force GM's plant in Valencia seizing production facilities and car stock, and causing the company to cease all operations in Venezuela. On April 25, 2017, GM Venezuela challenged the court's decision that defies any legal logic before the Venezuelan Supreme Court. Nevertheless, on May 25, 2017, the Supreme Court confirmed the lower court's order to seize GM's assets, including its assembly plant although one of the Supreme Court's judges expressed a dissenting opinion finding elements that hinted at violations of due process and the constitutional order. The Potential Treaty-Based Investment Arbitration In light of this denial of justice leading up to an unlawful expropriation disguised as court's enforcement orders, 
GM may seek protection and redress under the applicable bilateral investment treaty. General Motors Venezolana Compañía Anónima, or GM Venezuela, is wholly owned by General Motors Automotive Holdings SL, or GM Spain, a company incorporated in Spain. As such, GM Spain may invoke the Spain-Venezuela Bilateral Investment Treaty, or Spain-Venezuela BIT, to launch an investment arbitration to claim that Venezuela breached her international obligations under that treaty with respect to its investment in Venezuela, GM Venezuela, and thus seek reparation. Specifically, Venezuela may have committed a breach of her international obligations to provide full protection and security, to accord fair and equitable treatment, and to pay compensation following a creeping expropriation. The measures adopted by the Venezuelan judicial authorities can indeed trigger the international responsibility of the Venezuelan state. Article 4 of the Articles of State Responsibility expressly sets forth that the actions and omissions of domestic courts can be directly attributed to the respective state and thus entail its international responsibility. This is even more so when a subject matter was litigated all the way through its highest court, such in this case, and therefore, all local remedies had been exhausted. On the other hand, Venezuela may argue in her defense that the dispute resolution provision under the Spain-Venezuela BIT may contain a fork-in-the-road provision, meaning that since GM Venezuela already litigated this subject matter before Venezuelan courts, then it could not resubmit the same dispute to an international arbitration. Nevertheless, this objection can be easily rebutted because it is not the same dispute, as the disputing parties, the causa patendi, and the petitum do not overlap. In the international arbitration, GM Spain will be the claimant, whereas the party involved in the proceedings before the Venezuelan courts was GM Venezuela litigating against two car dealerships. In addition to this, the Spanish company's claims will be based on the Spain-Venezuela BIT, rather than Venezuelan national law, so the cause of action will differ. Also, the relief sought in the arbitration may differ from the relief sought before Venezuelan courts. While in the domestic proceedings, GM Venezuela was asking for the annulment of the court's orders. In the international arbitration, GM Spain may request the restitution in kind of the assembly plant and or an adequate, prompt, and effective compensation amounting to the value of the expropriated plant. Further, it is because Venezuela breached her international obligations through her judiciary that GM Spain may put forward a denial of justice claim and ask for reparation. A denial of justice occurs when state organs obstruct access to justice hindering a foreign investor's right to bring a claim before a competent court or arbitral tribunal, or when state courts deprived a foreign investor of a fair and equitable procedure. In the case at hand, the denial of justice claim can be framed under the Full Protection and Security Standard, or FPS Standard, as per Article 3 of the Spain-Venezuela BIT, as well as under the Fair and Equitable Treatment Standard, or FET Standard pursuant to Article 4 of the applicable BIT. Under the FPS standard, the host state is under an obligation to protect proactively foreign investments from adverse effects, which may come from private parties or its own state organs. In the case at hand, such adverse events stemmed both from private parties, the two car dealerships compelling GM to deliver 9,000 vehicles on no legitimate grounds, and from state organs, the state courts seizing GM's assets on account of GM's inability to deliver the 9,000 vehicles. Additionally, the FPS standard obliges the host state to guarantee legal security enabling the foreign investor to operate its business effectively. On this point, the International Court of Justice in the ELSI case established that the full protection and security standard is not restricted to physical protection, but extends to legal protection through the host state domestic courts indeed. Undeniably, not only omitted Venezuelan courts any protection for GM Spain's investment in Venezuela, but also deliberately took actions that adversely affected GM Spain's investments. As to Article 4 of the Spain-Venezuela BIT, Venezuela violated the Fair and Equitable Treatment Standard, or FET Standard, provided therein through her judiciary to the extent that her courts failed to ensure a fair and equitable procedure to GM Spain's investment in Venezuela, that is, GM Venezuela. By failing to notify GM Venezuela of an enforcement procedure taking place seven years after the issuance of the allegedly corresponding judgment, Venezuela caused the foreign investor denial of justice. For instance, in Middle East Cement v. Egypt, an ICSID tribunal came to the conclusion that the respondent state breached the FET standard by failing to notify the investor of the seizure and actioning of a ship belonging to the investor. 
Moreover, given the inconsistency between, on one hand, the 2000 declaratory judgment leaving without effect the notice of termination of the two dealership agreements, and on the other, its corresponding enforcement orders of 2007, 2016, and 2017 requisitioning first 9,000 vehicles, and then the whole GM assembly plant, the arbitrariness of the whole procedure before Venezuelan courts is blatant by any standard of review. The enforcement court executed the declaratory judgment ultra petita, beyond the boundaries of the judgment scope, thereby infringing the due process. Along with the denial of justice claim for breaching the FPS and FET standards, GM Spain may advance also a creeping expropriation claim under Article 5 of the Spain-Venezuela BIT. A creeping expropriation takes place when a series of acts attributable to the host state over time culminate with the taking of the investor's property without compensating the investor. Therefore, such acts as a whole have an effect tantamount to an unlawful indirect expropriation. In this regard, Article 5 of the Spain-Venezuela BIT is also broadly phrased to include measures with similar effects to expropriation. Accordingly, it also applies to such creeping expropriations. By repeatedly ordering the delivery of over 9,000 vehicles on predatory terms, only to then proceed to seize GM's factory in Valencia upon GM's default on the delivery, Venezuelan courts committed over a period of time a creeping expropriation of GM Spain's investment in Venezuela. Besides their unfairness and arbitrariness, the lack of proportionality of the Venezuelan court's measures in addressing a mundane dealership manufacturer court case is a further indication of their expropriatory character. Objectively, it appears that the long-dormant court case between the two dealerships and the automaker was used as a pretext by the Venezuelan state to take over the whole business of GM Venezuela, whose plant was estimated to be worth over $100 million, being not only the largest assembly plant in the country, but in the whole Andean region of South America, comprising of Colombia, Ecuador, and Venezuela, employing 2,700 workers with a production capacity of 80,000 units per year and counting on a network of 79 dealerships. The Arbitration Forum, the ensuing arbitral award, and its enforcement. In light of Venezuela's 2012 denunciation of the ICSID Convention and the recent arbitral award in Kimberly Clark v. Venezuela confirming that an arbitration under the ICSID facility rules is no longer an option for foreign investors who want to sue Venezuela, the only forum available to arbitrate an investment dispute against Venezuela under the Spain-Venezuela BIT is an arbitration pursuant to the UNCITRAL arbitration rules. Hence, GM Spain may initiate an UNCITRAL arbitration which may be administered by the Permanent Court of Arbitration in The Hague. Potentially, an UNCITRAL arbitration could also be administered by other arbitration institutions, including the ICSID itself, as the arbitration institution also offers to administer disputes under the UNCITRAL arbitration rules or to render administrative services in ad hoc arbitrations under these rules. An award rendered under the UNCITRAL arbitration rules can be enforced in accordance with the 1958 New York Convention that allows for the recognition and enforcement of foreign arbitral awards practically worldwide currently in 170 jurisdictions. Such an award could be used to attach Venezuelan assets located abroad. For instance, arbitral awards against Venezuela have been executed against assets of Citgo, a U.S.-based subsidiary of PDVSA, the Venezuelan National Oil Company. Others have been executed against oil tankers owned by PDV Marina, another subsidiary of PDVSA. Interestingly, and more recently, Enforcement actions have been taken also against individuals who were indicted of money laundering on behalf of the Venezuelan government. Reportedly, one of these individuals owns luxury properties in Spain, in Madrid and Marbella, that have been frozen by Spanish authorities pending a criminal investigation for money laundering in connection with PDVSA. By way of reference, just one of these properties alone is apparently worth 10 million euros. Additionally, one of the most substantial assets of Venezuela is, and probably remains, the $1 billion in gold stored in London and used as collateral in international transactions by the Venezuelan government. Alternatively, GM Spain may also leverage the award, or even a settlement award, to re-enter the Venezuelan market by regaining control over its assembly plant in Valencia by virtue of an arbitral decision providing for restitution in kind as the first remedy in terms of reparation failing which a monetary compensation amounting to the value of the plant shall become payable. Conclusion In sum, the Venezuelan court's actions and omissions, which are attributable to the Venezuelan state, 
are in contravention of the international rights that GM Spain enjoys under the Spain-Venezuela BIT. Accordingly, GM Spain may commence an unsatural arbitration against Venezuela under the Bilateral Investment Treaty to request the restitution of its plant and or the payment of a compensation in excess of $100 million. The resulting arbitral award can be enforced worldwide on assets belonging to the Venezuelan government and its instrumentalities thanks to the 1958 New York Convention. Bottega di Bella, empowering your international rights.